Hey everyone, in this video I wanted to quickly go over what happens when we have multiple conditional access policies that apply to a certain authorization request to get a token for the application. Because maybe we think, well, it's just the first one will match and then it stops, but that, that's not the case. So it's important to understand exactly what is going on. It might be easier to start out if we just look at a conditional access policy. Now, the first thing to notice when we look at all of our policies is there is no order. There is no concept of moving a policy up or down. There is no priority. It's just you have this whole bunch of policies. And if we look at a policy, we have, well, it's assignment. So it's assigned to, hey, specific users or people in specific groups or a certain type like external, um, which application and then you have a whole bunch of conditions. Now those conditions can be based around the user's risk or the sign-in risk from identity protection. It might be based around the device platform locations we have defined, a client application or browser, attributes on the device. And then you have the controls. So everything when we talk about assignment, this is all being compared against to see, well, does this policy apply? hey, if you match anything that I have configured, then this policy applies. And then if it applies, the controls are enforced. And you can see, well, maybe I'm just gonna block access or hey, I'm gonna grant access, but I have different things that I might require. And I can require all of the things I select or I could require just one of them. So I can do that or relationship. So the key point here, if we think about it, is, well, what we have is the application that we're assigning this particular policy. It could be all applications, it could be a subset, it could be based on some attribute, like a custom attribute of the application. And then I can think, well, there's the user part. So it's, well, who is the user? It could be, well, what is the groups the user is in? It could be the type of the user. It could be things like the risk. Now this comes from identity protection. And when I think about risk, well, this could be the user's overall risk, or it could be the risk of the particular sign-in that's part of the authorization. And then of course, we have the idea of, well, then there's the machine that they're on that machine has, well, what is the platform? Is it a particular client application? It has its own attributes that I can define in Azure AD, like it's a secure access workstation. Then of course there's things like, well, the location. So I have these various factors, the assignment and then the conditions. And then what I do is, well, I create policies, I create those conditional access policies and I configure certain attributes from there. So if they're all of the different things available to me, if I'm gonna go and now let's just create three conditional access policies. So I'm gonna create my conditional access policies and maybe I've got uh, policy one, two and three. And maybe policy one is any application and it's any user. And on this case, maybe my focus is on, well, if the user risk is high. So these are the things it's gonna get compared against. And the point of policies, remember, is these are all the conditions. Well, then what we have is the various controls that happen. So then I can think, well, what is the controls available? Maybe it's I require MFA. Maybe it's I'm using authentication strength and I require a stronger MFA, the authenticator app or password list. Maybe I'm gonna require them to change their password. Uh, maybe I make it a compliant device. I'm gonna check that. Maybe I even deny. And we'll, we'll talk about that later on. So maybe in this case for this policy, well, hey, it's a high user risk. Uh, I'm gonna make them change their password. So that's the requirement that I'm going to do there. And then we can follow this through. Maybe uh, policy two, 
Again, it could be any application. And again, it could be all users. So I'll say any user, all users. This time now I focus on the sign-in risk. So hey, if it's medium sign-in risk or above, well, in this case, I'm gonna want MFA and I want it to be a compliant device. So I have two requirements for that policy. Then my next one is specific. Hey, it's application X, this very important application. Again, it could be any user or all users. But this case, from the attributes of the device, I want it to be a secure access workstation and I want the location to be office. And additionally, because it's so important, I actually want here a strong MFA. Now the whole point when I create these policies is realize everything above the control line are things being compared against the scenario, the particular authorization request to see does the policy match. So let's say for example, my, um, my low, my attribute of the device was not a saw, well, this policy just doesn't apply. And so it wouldn't require a strong authentication. If, for example, I wrote the policy um, such that maybe it was, I wanted a low or medium, so let's say I wrote this a different way, I wanted low or medium user risk to be allowed to access the app. Well, if I had a high user risk, the policy wouldn't apply and they would just go through and not be challenged on anything. So it's really important to realize these are the conditions being checked against to see if the policy applies. I need to make sure there isn't a set of conditions where hey, it just passes straight through and I don't require any MFA or any conditions at all. I need to be super careful in how I um, write my policies. So now let's say in this scenario, we have the user, so the user is me, uh, maybe my user, my sign-in risk is medium, I am, the uh, attributes of my device, I am a secure access workstation, and I am in the office. So at this point, it goes across and says which policies apply. The first one doesn't match, because it wants a high user risk, I do not have a high, let's say I have low user risk in this particular scenario. It would not apply, it's not a match. So forget about all of its conditions. But hey, I do match on this one because it's just looking for any user and a sign-in of medium or above. This is a match. So that means this applies to me. But I'm also, and let's say I am actually using app X, so it was any app, this matches, this matches, this matches and this matches, so this is a match as well. So at this point, I match on multiple policies. So what happens? Well, it's actually very, very easy. When I have multiple policies apply, I and them together. So all of the controls, I have to meet all of the combined controls. So the controls here, if we look at what's required, well, I require MFA and I require a compliant device. I also match this one that requires a strong MFA. Now, because a strong MFA is improved over regular MFA, I have to do a strong MFA, which would also satisfy regular MFA. So the controls that apply to me is I have to do a strong authentication and I have to be a compliant device. And if four or five policies apply, it just ands all of those requirements together. That's the key point. The reason there's no priority or waiting or anything else or moving them up and down is because there is no order. Any policy I match, they all will apply. All of the controls get anded together. I have to meet all of the controls that they stipulate. Now let's imagine for a second I had a fourth policy, and my fourth policy, once again, was, let's say this time is any application, and it's any user, and this time what I've done is if my user risk is high, I'm actually just gonna deny. 
I'm doing that. It doesn't matter about anything else, I'm gonna deny. So now we'll change our scenario. So instead of my user risk being low, hey, my user risk now is high. Now obviously, what's happening here is, this is not very realistic because, hey, I've got the same essential policy to in two different things. So we could make this more interesting. Instead of this being any, we'll actually change this to at x. So now if we go through and look, well, I also match on nearly all of the policies now. I match on this one because I'm now high for my risk. So this is a match, sorry. Just do that out. And I match on this one. So from a what do I need to meet from a requirements perspective, well, I'd now have to change my password, sure. But this one's denying. And actually that one's just gonna win. So normally all of the requirements are added together. However, a deny just wins. So in this case, I'll just get denied. It won't give me a chance to do any of these other things. It will just deny me. So the core rule is that if I'm matching on multiple policies, all of the controls for all of the ones that match get added together. But if there is a deny, the deny just supersedes everything else and I will be blocked. Uh, do not pass go, go directly to jail which is why we have to be so careful with denies. It's not like a firewall. With a firewall, I might have a final rule that just blocks everything. Then I add higher rules that say will allow port 443, uh, apply whatever. That will not work here. If I had a deny rule for all users for everything, and I thought I was creating higher up conditional access policies, it will not work that way. I will just lock everyone out of everything. So deny will always win. And we can actually see this. If we jump over for a second, one of the nice things we can do, and I have a deny policy. So I've got one down here for my, uh, particular in this exact condition, that I have this super secure application that requires this highest level. And it's the same one I used in a demo, I actually recorded on Monday, sorry, Sunday. But this time I block access. I just block it completely. Now what we can actually do to see what happens, there's two things we can actually do. One, I can do a what if. So we see under policies, there is a nice what if. And what if enables me to fake scenarios. I can say, well, what if it was this user? What if it was this application? What if they were coming from this IP? What if they were on this platform with these attributes and this risk? and it will tell me what would happen in those scenarios. But the other nice thing, if I go and look, if I scroll down here, and I'm in the entry portal to monitoring and health and look at these sign-in logs. So I did a quick test yesterday just so I had some logs ready. If I go and look at sign-in logs, so I'm gonna look at this log first, there's a conditional access tab that will tell me which policies got applied. So I can see here most of them did not get applied and I can go and look at, well, why not? So for example, user and sign-in risk block and I can see here, well, the sign-in risk didn't match. The user risk did not match. So it did not get applied. Okay, fantastic. Now it did match the user, it did match the application, but I didn't match the risk requirements for that policy. So nothing happened. Here, where it did match the application, it did match the user, and so it had a control that required an authentication strength, which I met. So it let me through. Whereas I had another login and this time on this login, notice I've got failures because I have, and in this case, what is happening here is my device did not match the exclusion rule. So I had a rule that said, hey, if you match a secure access workstation, do not apply this. But if you don't, i.e. you're not a secure access workstation and you're trying to access the super secure doggo application, well, its control is to deny you. 
And so because I was not excluded, I got denied. And nothing else that this would require kicks in. It doesn't check anything else. It just denied me. So I can go and look at all of the different sign-in requests, which is really useful, to go and see, okay, so why, why is this thing happening? And this would be really good if maybe you crafted your policies a little bit incorrectly. And for example, you just put in the conditions you wanted for the policy to apply. Like instead of having a deny one, if I had a user at high risk, maybe I wrote my policy um, just here, and I said, well, I want you to have low risk. And that's great if they have low risk, but if they were medium or high risk, for example, the policy wouldn't apply. And unless you have a policy to catch high risk, they'll just go through with no MFA requirements whatsoever. So I have to make sure I'm thinking of all of the scenarios and those tools can really help. So that was it. I just wanted to cover it at a really super high level just to make it clear that, hey, very often you'll have multiple policies that apply and all that happens is it goes through all of the conditions to work out which policies match the particular set of um, conditions that you have in your authorization request. And then all of the access controls for all of the policies that match are added together and I have to meet all of them. Unless there's a deny, in which case deny just wins and I'm blocked. So that was it. I hope that helps clear that up. Until next video, take care.